Okay, so just to confirm, can you still see the presentation? Yes. Oh, it looks good. Ah, okay, but uh, you're right. Aha, bo ja zrobiłam. Coś zrobiłam z tego. O, przepraszam. Because we have uh, another view at the lecture room, so we just need to. Uh, I don't know if we changed it. The Najlepiej zróbcie mirroring, jakby się udało, bo to wtedy będzie na Zoomie będzie źle. Już już chwilę. Pokaż kontrolki. Any ideas? Anyone here in the room? A pokaż mi standardowy pokaż. Nie wiem o co chodzi. Nie, to już A już teraz. Nie, nie chcę zamykać. Bo tutaj nic nie było. Nie, to nie było to. Nie to tylko w stylu, ale to nie wiem, bo to jest tylko zakładka. Ale pokaż pokaż slajdu, bo to jest tak, pokaż kontrolki, które... O, tak? Coś się zmieniło tu? Tak było. Bo jeszcze nie ma pokazu. To trzeba to też? Nie. Powinno być odwrotnie. Teraz? Teraz? To muszę na tym screenie, tak? Tak, na tym screenie. Dobra, to. No to właśnie to mamy cały czas. Jakoś zmieniliśmy te wyświetlacze? Nie wiem, jak teraz je. A zamiast wyświetlacze, tak, tak gdzieś tam? Nie, już nie właśnie powiem, gdzie jestem kurczę. O, 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 jednak pani profesor, brawo, ok. So, uh, can you hear us well once again? Łukasz? Yes. Ok, so perfect. So sorry for a little delay. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you at the Tuesday seminars. And today our guest is Profesor Jadwiga daszyńska Daszkiewicz uh, from Wrocław University. Uh, Jadwiga is an expert in stellar pulsations, working mostly on theoretical part also on uh, opacities that we're gonna uh, we're gonna listen today. And uh, she uh, she's been uh, studying in, in Wrocław, then she spent some time in Lyon, if I'm right, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And then she get to uh, back to Wrocław, where uh, where she works on asteroid The floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I think I remember, as far as I remember, I was here seven years ago. It was still when Wojtek Kimbowski was coming to the observatory. So uh, it's nice to be here. Uh, thank you for the invitation. And today I am going to talk about, uh, talk about uh, seismic analysis of uh, a few Delta Scuti as, 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 as Spaghetti stars. Uh, uh, and this uh, seismic analysis really indicates that uh, something is uh, still wrong with opacity data. Uh, okay, so if somebody is, uh, for, for those who are not familiar with the astral seismology, uh, I will briefly explain how it works. Uh, so, uh, solar interior can act as a resonant cavity. In which uh, propagating waves can generate standing wave, and then global oscillations are excited, and what we observe as a light variation or line profile vari variation or both. Uh, 
Uh, and the Serra Seismology is a study of the sterile interior um, uh, by, by, by uh, uh, the analysis of the, of the uh, frequencies uh, uh, of, of these hydrodynamic waves. It could be buoyance waves or uh, pressure waves. Uh, and in this way, we can say something about, about the interior uh, uh, of the star. Uh, the important fact is also that the star can pulsate in many modes, and uh, uh, each mode has slightly different sensi sensitivity to, to stellar interior. So, uh, by studying multiple pul pulsation, we can we can touch touch uh, different parts of star. So, uh, uh, as I said already, asteroseismology allows us to look inside a stars. Uh, so this is a HI diagram with, uh, uh, th this is an overview of, of uh, instability domains of the, the classes of pulsating variables. Uh, as you can see, a uh, star can pulsate with different effective temperature, different luminosity, and a different evolutionary stage uh, because of some reasons. Of course, this, uh, these uh, regions are schematic because these borders are very fluid. And uh, okay, so uh, what we do to, to, to study the star uh, in, in this way, we have to construct so called seismic models, which means that we have to construct the pulsational model, which has a frequency exactly the same as observ the observed frequencies within the error. And what you can see. <laughs> Okay, so, so we have uh, calculated frequencies, which depends on the three uh, numbers, uh, NLM, and two vectors of parameters, let's, uh, let's say. And of course, uh, the, the pulsational model has uh, to have uh, effective temperature and luminosity consistent with the observation. We want to have pulsational model on the H di R diagram, uh, not far from the observed error box. Okay, so uh, you can see here these three numbers we have, which we have to know actually in advance to start seismic modeling. So the n value is uh, the number of nodes in the radial directions. So uh, so we can have a fundamental mode, first overtone, second overtone. So n gives us um, describes the shape of eigenfunction. So uh, it means that uh, uh, it describes how pressure, temperature, density changes during the pulsational cycle. And here you have LM uh, numbers, uh, which describes uh, the geometry of the mode on the surface. Uh, of course, uh, we have to remember that this is uh, in the approximation of uh, we, we 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 have uh, we have a, an approximation that the start is still spherical symmetric, and then we can describe the pulsational mode by spherical harmonics. So these L and L numbers are uh, the indexes of spherical harmonics. Okay, and then we have two parameters P M and P two. Uh, two vectors of uh, parameters. Uh, so we have uh, parameters uh, of the model. That means the uh, mass, uh, chemical, the global chemical composition. Of course, like uh, initial, uh, initial, uh, initial uh, hydrogen abundance, initial metallicity, age, or effective temperature. Uh, we have to know uh, uh, stellar rotation, and we have also the vector of the parameters of theory. Three parameters of the theory. Uh, like, uh, for example, the convection in the outer layers in the in envelope, uh, which is described only by the, um, the three parameters, so called the uh, mixing length parameter, alpha MLT. Uh, we have overshooting from general from convective regions, uh, mostly from convective pores, but not only. Uh, we can say general, general about mixing processes, uh, also professional reduced processes which are also described by the three parameters, uh, mass loss, which is also described by the, the, the three parameters, angular momentum transfer, 
magnetic etc and um, uh, we have also micro physics data so all these uh, these parameters uh, uh, we have to assume to compute pulsational model so by micro physics data i mean opacities uh, uh, equation of state and uh, rate, reaction, nuclear reaction rates. Okay, so for our analysis, we uh, selected four stars. Uh, these are um, high amplitude delta scuti stars. BP uh, Pegasi, AE UMA, R V Arietis, and S X Phoenicis. Uh, this is a spectral type, this is a parallax from Bulgaria, this is a population, of course, these three stars are the first population star, the, the last one is the prototype of uh, Xfinity stars. Uh, this is the entire range of temperatures collected from the literature, luminosity derived from, from, uh, from Gaia parallaxes and uh, uh, proper volumetric correction. Uh, metallicity and uh, the projected uh, rotational velocity. So all these stars, uh, as far as uh, projected uh, uh, rotational velocity is concerned, as rather are rather slow rotators. Mm, okay, so these are frequencies of these modes. Um, so this is uh, each each of the each of these stars have the two uh, frequencies. Uh, uh, this is the dominant frequency and this is the second frequency. This is the amplitude of these frequencies corresponding to these frequencies. And this is the ratio of the, these two frequencies. Uh, the frequencies of BP Pegasi was, uh, were de derived uh, from ASAS data uh, and their amplitudes, as I wrote here, are in uh, minima. And for the other three stars, we have test data in, in several sectors. So we analyze this, uh, these uh, light curves, and these amplitudes are in the PPT, which means parts per thousand. So as, uh, when we look at this, uh, this ratio, uh, it uh, indicates already that uh, this month, uh, these two frequencies N1 and N2 can correspond to radial modes, uh, uh, in particular to, to the fundamental mode and first overtone. And this is an example of the Fourier amplitude periodograms for, for our arietis uh, obtained from test light curves uh, uh, from two sectors, S42, S43, and this is the first uh, periodogram for the original data. And then we, uh, I, I, I put here uh, a few uh, steps of pre whitening uh, after the subtraction of the one term, seven terms, and 137 terms. And uh, most of these terms are um, uh, harmonics or combinations. And only in, in, uh, uh, in the case of uh, three stars, the independent, that only two independent frequencies. And only in the case of RFV arietis, so we have three frequencies. So the, this is the, the third frequency, which is, which is not a combination. And it is very close to the second frequency. So it means that this third frequency cannot be the radial mode. It has to be connected with some dipole or quadruple mode, uh, but not the radial mode because it is too close to the, to the, to the, uh, to the second frequency. So, uh, okay, so the, all these four stars are relatively simple objects. Why? Because um, they pul pulsate most probably in two radial modes, just very fundamental and third of a term. The linear theory of pulsations is still applicable because the amplitudes are not as, uh, as large as in the case of classical ZFAs. They are slow rotators. Uh, effective temperature uh, is not very low. It means that the envelope uh, of, the, uh, of the stars is not dominated by the convective transport. Uh, in, for, for such masses like uh, from about one to 
two solar masses, the, the mass loss can be, in the first uh, approximation, we can uh, neglect uh, mass loss. Uh, and also we, we do, do not observe, because there are some spectra of the stars, that we, we don't observe uh, some any evidence uh, that, that there is uh, a typical chemical uh, composition. So we can uh, neglect diff diffusions or levitation, etc. Okay, so as I, uh, as I said, uh, these two frequencies uh, for the, each star correspond most probably to the radial modes, but we wanted to check this uh, by using multicolor photometry because for each star we have a time series photometry uh, in uh, the Schrembrand passband. So we have amplitudes and phases. So uh, in, this, in, in each case, we can apply the method of mode identification based on the amplitudes and phases. Uh, how it works, uh, we have to use the, the expression, the formula for the, uh, the, uh, the, the light variation in a given passband. That by, uh, passband is uh, noted by uh, lambda. And uh, here you have uh, epsilon, which is the intrinsic amplitude of the mode. So this is the, how much the radius changes uh, the radius changes during the pulsational cycle, which uh, we cannot uh, obtain, of course, within the linear computation. Then you, you have a factor which uh, uh, depends on the inclination, on the, the, the angle between the, the rotational axis and the, the, the direction to the observer. Uh, this uh, term uh, contains uh, the link darkening law. And then you uh, have three terms, D1, D2, and D3, which correspond to temperature effects, geometrical effects, and pressure in general effects. Uh, and here we have uh, this F parameter, which we, which we obtain from uh, nodal diabetic uh, calculations. And, uh, and uh, this F parameter uh, tells uh, us uh, what is the uh, flux changes at the level of the photosphere? Well, that's what we observe. And that's, uh, this is from the non-adiabatic computations. And the theoretical F is, uh, as I said, uh, from linear non-adiabatic computation. But on the other hand, we can derive, uh, let's say, semi-empirical values of M from this multicolor photometry, because this F is here. Yes. So if we have multicolor observations, we have rewrite. Uh, so uh, we have rewrite this uh, this uh, this equation like a set of observational equation, and we can solve this this system and determine this epsilon value and a value for a given. Uh, so uh, uh, coming back to this f parameter, which is very important. It depends on the value, of course, uh, of the frequency. It depends also on the shape of the eigenfunction. So it depends whether we have fundamental or the first, first overtone or second overtone. It depends on the global parameters of the star. It depends also on uh, chemical uh, composition, on opacities, and on the subphotospheric convection. That's very important. Uh, and uh, actually, these parameters is another seismic uh, probe of sterile interior. It is complementary to pulsational frequencies. Okay, so uh, so the method, uh, 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 the aim is to, to solve this, the whole system of equation. Uh, the, the, you have so many equation as, uh, as uh, you have the number of, of, of uh, pass bands. Uh, and for a given L, uh, we obtain some uh, uh, a goodness of the teeth, which gives you uh, how uh, the observed amplitudes and phases uh, uh, in past bands agree with uh, with the observations. That's a goal. And uh, we regard uh, we regard this uh, L value as the most probable if uh, there is a deep minimum. So, but this is not chi squared because this is not this is not the uh, we don't have such a number of pass bands. But th this is uh, let's say discriminant. And to compute this uh, 
uh, these uh, derivatives, we need the models of atmospheres. We need the fluxes in different past ones. We have to compute derivatives over effective temperature and log G. So we can use Kurs uh, model atmosphere, so we can use NEMO models. Uh, we we uh, we based uh, our uh, computation on, on, on NEMO model atmospheres. Okay, so let's go to the results. So this is a model identification for the dominant frequency for BP Pegasi. This is this discriminant as a function of L. So uh, this, uh, these panels are for different combination of uh, metallicity and microturbulent velocity. Because uh, if you have model atmospheres, you, it, they depend on the microturbulent velocity and on also the metallicity. So uh, uh, in each case, uh, you can see that the, the minimum is at L equals zero. It means that the mod is radial. And the same for the second frequency. Uh, we can see that all minimum is at L equals zero. So this is a confirmation apart to the frequency ratio that uh, these modes are really the radial ones. OK, so this is mode identification. And let's uh, continue my seismic modeling. Uh, but before I will show you how well uh, how the Peterson diagrams are sensitive on different parameters. This is again an example for BP Pegasi. This is this diamond, the, uh, uh, black diamond. And here you have the, the, the frequency ratio of the uh, fundamental to the first order term as a function of. Uh, fundamental frequency, and this is the effect of mass. So the, the, the lower the mass, the lower the frequency ratio. And here you have effect of um, initial uh, hydrogen. I, I don't know how to operate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, the initial hydrogen abundance, metallicity, uh, rotation, and also overshooting from the convective core. So and this is for a given mass. So you can see that depending on these parameters, uh, we have the shift uh, uh, up and or down uh, comparing to the, the, the observations. And also there is a very, very strong effect of uh, the, the mixing length parameter. This is alpha MLT, which describes the efficiency of convection in the, in the envelope. So uh, let's concentrate on, on the black and red line. Uh, um, black line is 0.5 uh, alpha MLT, and the red line is 1.8, like, similar to our sun, what, what is derived from Kilo seismology. And we can see that if, if the convection is uh, efficient, is 1.8, so it's a red line. Uh, close to thumbs, so when the temperature is lower and lower, this frequency ratio drops suddenly, and then it goes up, and then after that, this is the main sequence phase, overall contraction, and uh, shell hydrogen burning phase. So the effect is, is, uh, is, is huge. And uh, the effect of alpha MLT is, uh, is more important. It, metallicity is more important because the, the higher the metallicity, the higher the opacity, the higher opacity, the higher the, the radiative gradient. And the radiative gradient is much uh, larger than the adiabatic gra gradient. Then the convection is more important. Uh, okay, so uh, as you uh, can see, uh, as, as, as you saw, uh, we have many parameters to, 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 to constrain. We have mass, uh, we have initial hyd hydrogen abundance, we have metallicity, we have uh, rotational velocity, and we have overshooting, and we have alpha MLT parameters. So we, we cope with this uh, huge number of PR parameters. Uh, we uh, made, um, uh, uh, we computed an extensive grid of uh, seismic models, uh, uh, pulsational models, 
and uh, and the whole analysis was uh, based on the, uh, the Bayesian alarm analysis using Monte Carlo uh, simulation. So uh, it was uh, uh, um, we computed the product of such a Gaussians. So this is the whole of Gaussians like function, and that uh, this is H. H is a hypothesis which represent an adjustable model and theory parameters. So this is all what we want to determine. Mass, hydrogen abundance, metallicity, rotational velocity, overshooting, and alpha NLP. Uh, e represents the calculated observables. That's what we can compute. We can compute effective temperature. We can compute luminosity. Uh, we can compute uh, pulsational frequencies. And all, uh, calligraphic all is, uh, are observed parameters with some errors, of course. So we have error box on the HR diagram, and we have also errors in the, uh, although small, but we have some also errors in the frequencies. Okay, so uh, we, we as, as, I, as I said, we use the following with observation, effective temperature with the error, luminosity with the error, the frequencies of the two radial mode, and this F parameter for the dominant mode. That's uh, from this method which I uh, explained uh, uh, before. Uh, okay. Uh, and for the second, uh, second mode, uh, this, uh, the, the amplitudes were too, too low to, to determine uh, this F parameter. So, so we use this uh, parameter only for the dominant mode. Okay, so seismic models with uh, uh, computed with the uh, Opal data. So we made uh, about um, ninety uh, thousand to one hundred sixty thousand simulation, depending on the start. It depends how it converge. Uh, and uh, the best way to, to present this, uh, these results is to, to plot histograms. So these are normalized histograms, so the number of the model divided by the total number of the model. Uh, so if we uh, uh, multiply this number by 100, uh, it gives a percentage, a percentage of the model with, with, uh, in, the, in the given parameter range. Yes, so for example, we have uh, more than 20% models with the mass of about this or 1.83, for example. So we got such um, such results for the mass. Uh, you, you see also that not all these distribution are uh, symmetric. Yes, there are some. Is uh, they are quite skewed. Uh, there are some outliers, um, and uh, this is. Uh, for the metallicity, again, these four stars. And uh, the initial uh, um, hydrogen abundance, this is uh, for the uh, rotational velocity, but this current rotational, the actual rotational velocity, not the initial on the zero H main sequence. Uh, so in this, in particular, in this case, we, we can say uh, 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 rather about the uh, about the upper limit of the rotational velocity, because, uh, for example, here we have uh, uh, all uh, well, it, it, it looks quite quite uh, the number of the models are, are comparable, and finally we have this alpha MLT. Uh, so this is the Pegasi. This is uh, the, the maximum is around 0.6. Here uh, uh, for the second star uh, uh, about 0 0.5, 0 0.5, and in the case of S Xpenisis, which is which is a uh, uh, less much less massive star, is about one. Uh, and uh, in this uh, uh, this uh, plot, uh, uh, this is a, a comparison of histograms from simulation obtained with parameter f and without parameter f. So this f parameter is crucial to get the const constraints on the uh, efficiency of convection in the envelope. So here we, we got uh, what, what I, uh, what I uh, 
uh, showed already. So the maximum is around 0.6. And uh, if we don't use this F parameter for the dominant mode, uh, actually all the um, values of alpha MLT from zero up to, let's say, 1.5 uh, are equally possible. Okay, uh, and uh, these are medium values uh, of the parameters from this histogram, from all these histograms, just to summarize somehow uh, the obtained constraints. Uh, so this is the mass. So the most massive star is uh, BP Pagazi, it's 1.8, and, uh, uh, and these are the errors, not symmetric, because this is the median values. Uh, which is a more informative statistic than the average because uh, the, these histograms are not, not symmetric, yes? Uh, so, okay, so this is about 1.5, 1.6, and as, it's, as, uh, as extended, it's about 1.1 uh, solar mass. And uh, metallicity, uh, BPP gas is the most uh, uh, metallic, uh, let's say, uh, star. Uh, a, uh, uh, A.E. Uma and R. Paul Ariutis is uh, more or less uh, similar to the solar me metallicity. And as X is the second population star, so uh, the, the metallicity is much, much lower. Okay, uh, and uh, initial hydrogen abundance, uh, alpha MLT, uh, as I mentioned, the s uh, star uh, has uh, the, the larger value of alpha MLC, so the convection in the outer layers is most efficient uh, among uh, these stars. And uh, uh, in the case of these models computed with the opal opacities, uh, this, most of these models are within the error box. So the effective temperature and also luminosity uh, have uh, values consistent with, is consistent with observations. Uh, well, it is important to, 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 to add also that uh, this is much lower than the solar value. And actually when people compute uh, some evolutionary models, even for the stars which is 20 solar masses, they always use solar, I don't know why, solar value of alpha MLT. It's, uh, it's, well, it's, it's uh, I, I think, not, not, not good. Okay, so I showed you results with the opal uh, opacities. And as I said, these uh, uh, seismic models uh, computed with the opal data uh, have effective temperature and luminosity consistent with the observed values. Uh, so then we computed seismic models with uh, OP and OPLIP opacities. OPLIP, uh, so we have, we have three, uh, three uh, opacity databases, which are widely used, uh, commonly used uh, in evolutionary computation. This is OPAL, OP, and OPLIP. The OPLIP is, these are new Los Alamos opacities, because the, the, the all Los Alamos opacities were they cause the, the, the mass discrepancy, interface, uh, etc. Um, so, uh, so, so we com uh, computed the seismic models for all these four stars using OP and OP capacities. And the problem is that all models for all four stars are much cooler and less luminous compared to the observed values of effective temperature and luminosity. Uh, so uh, uh, to give you some comparison, because I, 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 I could not put 100,000 models on the age diagram, so I, I, I selected the models for uh, some uh, for X for 70% and alpha MLT 0.5. So opal models for BP Pigazi are here on the age. Oplip are here and Oplip are here. When you, when you look at the other stuff, the situation is the same. Opal, Oplip, OP. And this, uh, these models are, are really quite far from, from, from uh, the error box. 
and uh, Paul Ariety is again over to give opinion. And as extremities, uh, here we have uh, opal seismic models. Here it's OP and OP. So the same situation, all those stars are with different masses, with different metallicity, different population. So the result is the, uh, the, the same. So always these OP and OP models are very, very far from the error box. And also, we started the, the new project. Uh, the, the, we started to, to construct seismic models for uh, some exfenities in Omega Centauri because there are some uh, observations also gathered by in, within the case project. Yes? Uh, you, you participated? No, no, no. no. Okay. But somebody, some of you participated. Okay. Ah, okay. Uh, anyway. <laughs> That was uh, with uh, Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but there is also a very nice paper about, uh, uh, by uh, Arek to Arthur Ole uh, about exfenitis in Omega Centauri. So these are five stars on the Petersen diagram, uh, five stars uh, from Omega Centauri, which uh, have the the frequency rate, ratio, which indicates that the uh, uh, two radial modes can be excited. For, for these four stars, uh, the fundamental and first overton, in, uh, in, in, in the case of this star, it would be fundamental and second overton. Uh, okay, so I will show you one uh, example. Uh, and the situation is very, very similar. Uh, so these are uh, this is uh, uh, these are seismic models of the star V two two O, and here you have opal uh, seismic models, and in in, in, in this uh, this region of I I diagram you have OP and oblique model. And uh, what is the reason? I have no idea, actually. Uh, actually, op opacity, opacity data are, are one of the most uh, uncertain ingredients of, of stellar modeling. Uh, this uh, computation of opacity data is not an easy task because what uh, does it mean to compute opacity? It means to compute the cross section for different uh, processes, for different interactions. Yes, you, you have to take into account absorption emission, and you have to compute cross-section, so the opacity, does the, don't, uh, opacity doesn't depend only on the chemical composition, but also on the number of the fine structure, left, fine structure levels taken into account for each ion. So this is a very complicated, a very complicated task. And we don't, of course, we don't ca calculate opacities. It, it, it is done by, uh, by uh, atomic physicists. Uh, and we can, we, can only, uh, we can only construct seismic models with this data. And uh, I don't know why. If, if you look at the evolutionary tracks computed with different opacities, uh, this is an example for the mass of 1.8. And uh, of course, the same chemical the, the composition in other kind of parameters. And so, and these are three evolutionary tracks computed with opal, op, and op. So you cannot see much difference in evolutionary track. Yes. And uh, I selected uh, the, 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 this one model, which uh, has. Um, the same effective temperature and the same luminosity to read of the the effect of the the, the effective temperature and luminosity and when i plotted uh, the evolution evolution of the frequency ratio of the fundamental and first overtone as a function of effective temperature so 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 i uh, this is the evolution so you can see that this is this ratio depends strongly on the adopted opacity. So the, the model is in the same place, 
in the same uh, point, actually, on the HII diagram, but the, 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 the difference is uh, at the third decimal place, which is huge, actually, because we want to, we want to fit frequency up to the, usually, the fifth decimal place. Or it's, 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 it doesn't make sense to fit better because of the numerical errors. Uh, so the difference is all uh, of the uh, yes all, all two already. Yeah? That's a lot. Um, also, when 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 I look at the uh, mean uh, Rosaland opacity, um, this is. Uh, I mean, Rosaland opacity is the uh, 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 harmonic average uh, c calculated uh, over uh, frequencies, yes, that uh, it, uh, over the photon frequencies. Uh, so uh, for this model, which, uh, which was here, this is the mean opacity profile, and it is also quite similar. When you look at the differences, uh, well, they are the, the, the relative differences uh, is about uh, six percent, especially in the region where, where is the uh, hydrogen ionization and the first uh, helium ionization. In this region, for example, where, where the main, main, main driving of the delta sputi star uh, pulsation uh, occurs, uh, these three uh, opacities are quite similar. This is about 4.67 in, in uh, logarithm. Uh, okay, so uh, what else? Um, I tried to look at uh, eigenfunctions of these uh, two modes, the fundamental modes and the, and the first overton for the same model, of, of course. And what I found is only that the not of the third, this is the eigenfunction of the pressure function, but it doesn't matter. I, I could also plot temperature or density. But anyway, the node of the first overtone is for the opal model is shifted compared to the model uh, computed with OP and OPLIP data. The shift is very small. The difference in te temperature is about 16,000, um, but uh, most probably it causes these differences in, in seismic modeling. But it tells me nothing what is wrong with opacity data. I give only a message <laughs> to atomic physicists that something is wrong uh, because uh, we cannot identify what is the problem. Okay, so uh, conclusions. Uh, so seismic models of uh, double radial stars strongly depend on the opacity uh, data, as, uh, as, as I tried to, to, to show you. Um, and only opal seismic models have uh, effective temperature and luminosity consistent with observations. The OP and OPLIP model are very, very uh, far from the observed error box. Uh, this F parameter, which is the, the, mm, the radiative flux uh, variation at the level of, of the photospheres, that's what we observe, is uh, the, so uh, including the, this F parameter into seismic modeling is crucial to constrain the efficiency of, of convection in the, in the outer layers. Uh, Okay, so these are uh, just nine of the values, which are much lower than the solar value, value which is 1.8. And, oh, that's what I didn't mention yet. Uh, the vast ma majority of seismic models burn hydrogen in the shell. Um, so these are post-main sequence models. Uh, only few, uh, some models are in the overall contraction, but, but most models are already in the uh, in the shell hydrogen burning phase, uh, and uh, all uh, models in the phase or in the main sequence phase are too cool and too, uh, and have too low luminosity. 
And uh, okay, so such here huge effect of opacity can also occur, of course, uh, in the case of pulsational models of classical surface uh, and uh, are our lyra stars. So uh, one more sentence, uh, this would be end. Actual opacity uh, computation uh, is uh, um, 100, about 100 years old. Uh, it was already pointed out by Eddington that opacity is one of the most uncertain ingredients in stellar modeling. And uh, I think this is still very true. And um, it's, it seems that the revision is uh, an unfinished uh, story. It is also indicated uh, uh, by uh, helioseismology and, and, and uh, heliophysicists um, that, uh, that these um, measurements of opacity are much higher than this the predicted by any, any code. Okay, so thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any questions? I just wanted to be sure. So you had the data from HES and all the stars? Or yes, yes, that was yes, yes, data? yes. Yes, yes. Only maybe Pegasus was not observed by HES. But all these three stars, and there are more of the high amplitude delta spooky stars observed by HES. So, so we have also more results, but not finished yet. And I was actually wondering if the uh, binarity, so if the star is in a, in a binary, so let's say a fixing binary, does it help uh, put some constraints on the past? Oh, yes, uh, if, if, if eclipsing binary and SP2 <laughs> okay, <laughs> that does help a lot because it is strongly constraints uh, radius and mass. Mm -hmm. yes. So, for example, if you if you have this. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have such histograms, mm -hmm. and if you have the uh, masses from 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 uh, mm -hmm. solution of the, the light part, binary light part, uh, many models would be cut. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. That would help a lot. Yes. Any thoughts, questions? Martin. Yes. Uh, in, in short, then would you put? some constraint about the rotational velocity. Yes, yes, uh, but uh, actually this, uh, uh, this uh, um, histograms for rotational velocity are, are so asymmetric that you rather put uh, uh, an upper limit, yes? For example, 40, 30, 40, but uh, uh, I have to mention that rotation is uh, treated by us in a single way, but uh, that we include the mean effect of centrifugal force on the egg we need to models. And we have we include also the effect of rotation on the pulsation and frequencies up to the second order. But rotation is is, is really small that uh, such approach as we as we made is is, is okay. It's okay, enough. Uh, okay, because there are no non-radial pulsations in fact. So we have no constraint for true rotation. We have only somehow uh, projection rotation. Uh, but this is not a projected is rotation. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. So also, uh, yeah. It was at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, on the, um, Typically, the gas is spectral type A is low. Yes. Not, yes. not very cool. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, just the uh, impression that should be not 10,000. Not necessary. It depends on so also, also, well, this is a spectral classification, yes. yes. Any more questions? So we have uh, hundreds of thousands of these models. Yes. How kind of computers you use and how much time? Uh, it is a, this, is, this is a cluster on the technical university. 
as I have many people, because I have to mention that it was not uh, done by the many, but the, the whole team, Chemin uh, Bauter, Wojtek Szewczuk, also my new PhD students, Wojtek Niedadomski, also my new master students, Paweł Nagura, and also, uh, and of course, uh, uh, Professor Alosha Pamiakni, who uh, unfortunately broke his leg today and he couldn't come here because he's now in the hospital. I have another question, completely another question about this uh, opacity tables. They are derived from the basic physics of the supercomputers. Is it any chance to measure it empirically? Yes, uh, in the laboratory, to produce. Yes, in the, uh, well, yes, uh, but uh, uh, let me show you the one more slide. There is a very nice paper. That uh, yes, they, they measured in the in laboratory, yes, opacity, and uh, it appeared that the, the opacity is about 30 up to 400 percent higher than predicted by all codes. <laughs> it's very uncertain then. So, so never ending story. <laughs> Opacities, we, we know that we have uh, uh, larger problems with, with opacity because of the. Uh, we didn't have pulsation of P stars, yes, because we, in the old uh, Los Alamos data, uh, we didn't have this web bound, yes. Uh, I think uh, young people know about yes, this, this, this history, but um, the authority of this, this Los Alamos was so, so, so large and so high that nobody, uh, nobody Nobody wanted to say anything. <laughs> okay. But uh, as, as we know, it's still uh, another pro problem with opacity is that uh, uh, in B types, uh, in beta uh, phase, let's say, models, uh, high order gravity models are not excited, and we observe these models. So if we increase opacity, it's everything. Everything is okay, but of course we can modify capacity, but we have to do it. Mm -hmm. The a toy model, which is we have to control somehow. This. Okay, I uh, may only uh, ask about uh, this uh, uh, NLP modeling. Mm -hmm. Subsurface uh, convection mm -hmm. and uh, when you change the mixing length, it has been obtained a big differences or has not what? You obtained big differences when you change the uh, how much? Yes, uh, uh, you asked about the uh, Peterson diagram. Uh, okay. <coughs> when, okay, let's say from Peterson. Yes, so the effect is huge, I would okay, say. This is I, 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 I didn't know that this <laughs> looks like this. It's, right. it's really scary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, of course, as I said, it depends on, on metallicity. Because if metallicity is lower, the effect of, uh, of alpha energy is lower as well, because the capacity is lower. But uh, if, if you concentrate on this black and dark with the same metallicity, so black is like this, like, like this. And that with the higher alpha energy is like this. Okay. And uh, it, well, it depends on some kind of uh, evolution stage. Yes, alpha MLT is, yes, it depends, uh, it depends because uh, uh, all these models are uh, already cooler, yes, so the, the lower temperature, the, the higher uh, efficiency of convection in the envelope, yes. Yes, but yeah. Uh, well, I, when I when I plotted this for the first time, I couldn't believe that the effect is such so, 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 so big. And these Peterson diagrams are used, I don't know, one hundred years or something like this. But, uh, 
Uh, you you mean that other parameters can have uh, also uh, effect? Yeah, or? but uh, when you have uh, something from some background, you see the very big differences with some some very small changes. In yes. Yes, and also uh, uh, there are very big differences uh, in. Yes. yes, depending on opacity. And here you don't have the effect of effective temperature and the luminosity because these models have the same mass, the same effective temperature, and the same luminosity. So this is a pure effect of opacity on the Patterson diagram. And it is, it is huge because the difference is uh, about 0.002. Uh, that's a lot. I'm afraid we are running out of time. So thank you very much. Thank you. And see you next week. I don't remember which seminar it's going to be, but uh, I'm sure it will be interesting. Thank you, Mr.